Hello there, welcome back to my channel. As you saw in the title and the thumbnail, we're trying out a couple of brand new products. The first is the Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. This arrived this morning, the day that I'm filming this video. I haven't even swatched it yet, but I cannot wait to dive in. And then the other one is the new reformulated Revlon Color Stay Foundation. A couple months ago, they sent me an email. I'm on their PR list and they said, hey, would you like to receive the new formulation of this foundation? I'm like, yes, I would. So they sent me one bottle, one shade of the normal dry skin formula, and then two bottles of the combination oily skin. So maybe depending on what color suits me best will be the formula we tried today. But I just thought it would be fun to bring you all along for a try on and we can see what we think of these new products together. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. All right, we are first gonna dive into the eyeshadow palette, you know, because I can't wait any longer. Here is what the outer packaging looks like. It's more of a peachy color with some gold and green. And then the inside, oh my goodness. I mean, it's just so pretty. And I know there's a lot of green in here. So I am anxious to see how these colors translate. I have become a pretty big fan of green shadows and I do love the mini retro palette but I'm anxious to see how they coordinate with the pinks in here. You can see I put on my pink sweater, which is almost the exact color of this one. I did that on purpose. So we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna start with the eyes. I did already apply eyeshadow primer. I did a combination of the MAC 24 hour extend eye base and then I put a little bit of MAC soft ochre paint pot over that just to cancel out and kind of even out the tone on my lids. So we're gonna go to the palette. Now the first thing, I don't even have to swatch to find out, but there isn't a brow bone highlight shade in here. So I'm gonna go just to a palette I have at hand. This is the Tarte Gilded Palette. I'm gonna use this cream shade on my Sigma E50. Move my hair out of the way here. And this just gives me something to blend the crease colors up into. Okay, now let's get to the palette. Now something I like to do, and I've done a couple of videos on this, but what I like to do is just swatch a few of these colors on the back of my hand and put together some colors that I think will work. So let me do that and then I'll show you. I've been having a little bit of fun. So there's a couple of real light shades. So this is the light pink and the kind of mid-tone matte pink. So I'm definitely gonna be using those. I want to incorporate pink and green. The looks I've been seeing have been basically all the greens. So for this first look, I wanna challenge myself to combine the pink and the green. So oh, this shade, oh my goodness, so pretty. But I'm thinking I'm gonna be working, I think right down through here and then putting a couple of these in the crease. So we're gonna start in the crease with those pink shades. Let me get a brush here. I'm gonna use the Morphe M504. I'm gonna start with this light pink shade, which is called Holly. And ooh, definitely some powder kick up in the pan, but looks like the color is translating well to the eyes. Oh, that's pretty. So yeah, I did not have to work hard to build that color up at all. So let's move now to this matte rose shade, which is called Belle. And I'm going to start off with that same brush and just go a little lower on the crease and starting in the outer corner, work the brush through. Mm, that's pretty. Those two colors work very well together. All right, let's dig in, shall we? Let's just go crazy. I'm going to go in next with this dark green. Now, this is the darkest color in the palette that's matte. This one has a little bit of a satin finish. So this is as dark as you're really going to go. And this almost seems like it has a little sheen, but this is one of those cream to powder formulas, which I do love. I'm going to use the tiny little BK Beauty. This is the 209 brush. Let's go in that shade and I'm going to work this kind of a low in the outer corner. Oh, no problems building that color up, but it's very green. So 
I am seeing green. <laughs> Okay, I think I am gonna keep this below the crease for the moment. And then I'm gonna go in with this smaller fluffy brush. This is the A504, also from BK Beauty. And let's, mm, let's start off, I'm gonna put just a little bit of Bell. By the way, that green shade was called Evergreen, appropriately named. Let's just see what happens when the pink and the green are mixed together in the crease. Sometimes you can get kind of a purpley brownish tone and I think I am getting a little bit of that. I'm gonna take a little bit of evergreen now on that same brush and just lightly feather that up. Okay. I did get kind of a purpley gray tone as those two colors combine together. So I think that's actually really pretty. Okay, it's giving me a little bit of almost like springtime vibes, right? All right, let's just continue on. We're just gonna have some fun. So on the back of my hand next, I could definitely, we could skip the pink and we could do this green, but I want to challenge myself and us together. So I want to bring in a little bit of this pink. So that shade is this one right here called Flare. And this is the one that is closest to the sweater I am wearing right now. Let's just go right next to that green and see what that looks like. So I'm going to put that on the center of the lid. I'm not going to overlap the green because I think that's where I'm going to use a little bit of the shimmery green. So let's kind of dividing our lid into kind of thirds here. So the outer corner, kind of leaving that with the matte shade, putting this more closer to the inner corner. All right, let's go in next with the shade right here, which is called Marlin. I'm just going to go in with that same finger. I did wipe it off really well. But let's just see what happens if we overlap that green and the pink, just kind of where those two meet. I'm just gonna lightly tap over the pink and just see what happens. <laughs> We're just, just having some fun, you know experimenting here, right? Oops, I used the wrong green from the back of my hand. Let's go in with this one now, which is Oz. All right, let's see here what happens. You know, just got to see. Oh yeah, I like that better. Okay, that's more of what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, although that other shade is very pretty and I think will work well with the greens. But I think this one for this particular eye look and this placement, I think the darker one's better. Okay, I'm going to go back to this flare and just reinforce that a little bit here. Go in towards the inner corner a little bit more. And then let's go in with the inner corner. And I just have a feeling this is going to be one of my favorite shades in the whole palette. This is called Flutter. And it is a little bit loose, kind of loosey-goosey in the pan. So it kind of moves around a little bit, but I feel like once you kind of, once it warms up with your skin, it kind of seems to mesh better together. Kind of, it kind of starts adhering together. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, well, let's see what happens now. If I'm gonna go in with my fourth finger and I'm just going to lightly tap. So by tapping, I'm just getting kind of a little bit of glitter and I'm not getting quite as much pigmentation. So let's now just tap this over the entire lid and see if we can bring all of those colors together. I'm gonna go back in the crease with a little bit more of this rose shade and my M504, I'm just gonna blend that together. All right, it's very colorful, but, 
and a little bit springy, but I kind of like it. <laughs> now I'll just a touch more of that evergreen shade just right there on the very outer edge. And then I'll go back and just add a touch more of that flutter shade there towards the inner part of the eye. All right, let's add a little bit of liquid liner and I'm gonna use a new one from Revlon. They sent this also to me. It's the Dramatic Wear Liquid Eye Pin and it says Color Stay Sharp Line. Let's see, I'm a little picky about liquid liners. On the back of the package, it says it's transfer proof, smudge proof, waterproof, and ophthalmologist tested. So it does not have a shaker ball in it. Let's see, oh, it's one of these long kind of pointed felt tip pens. Let me just see how flexible. Okay, nice and flexible, very good pigment. All right, let's give this a try. All right, I feel like this look needs a wing liner. <laughs> Well, I have to say it is super black and matte, which I like, and pretty easy to draw on that wing. So that's a good start. I'm gonna finish off the lower lash line with a little bit of mushroom eye pencil from Urban Decay. And I'm just going to kind of start where I stopped with the black liner, work this across. I'm using this more as a base. And then I'm gonna go over that with a little bit of this shade right here, Oz. I'm gonna use a Morphe M432 to do that. Just go right over the top of that and just add a hint of green down here. And then because we haven't tried any of these matte greens, I'm gonna go in with this one right here, which is called Sage, appropriately named because it definitely looks more sagey. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Very pretty, very pigmented. There we go. I'm gonna curl my lashes and apply some mascara. I've just pulled out my drugstore trio. So this is the L'Oreal Voluminous Primer Lash Paradise and the Maybelline Snap Mascara in Waterproof. And then we will test out the Revlon foundation. Okay, I know this looks really strange. My eyes look very dramatic, but let's get some foundation on. All right, I've swatched the three shades they sent. So this is the dry skin version and this is shade 295, Dune. And the dry skin version has SPF of 20 in it. And then these two are the oily combination skin. This one is the shade 290 Ochre. And then this is the shade 300, and what is 300? 300 is Golden Beige. So this is definitely more of my Sunless Tanner shade. I was thinking this one was gonna be too dark, but actually, let's go ahead. I'm gonna start off today with this trial. Let's do the combination oily skin version. So let's do 290 Natural Ochre, and this one is SPF 15. Now, one thing I saw right away is the sunscreen is the physical sunscreen. So it's titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, which generally my skin prefers. So I was actually really happy to see that. Of course, it says 24 hour wear on here, long wear foundation. I'm not gonna test it for 24 hours, but I do remember when I first tried the original version way back in the 90s. It was pretty miraculous for me because I had horrible acne on my skin and oily skin, and I could not get a foundation to last all day, and this one did and it covered well. So I'm gonna use my BK Beauty brush. This is the 101 and let's just go for it. Let's just see. I am planning. Oh yeah, how's that old school makeup smell? <laughs> I'm not a fan of that, but it does bring back memories, I must say. All right, let's see how this shade is. Okay, not too bad actually, the shade match. And it gave me pretty good coverage. I'm gonna see how it does over the pores here. Okay, I'm gonna add just a little more. 
kind of in the center of the face here. And tap over kind of this spot that needs a little extra coverage. Kind of like what I remember of the original version. This does seem to set down pretty quickly. Um, oh, that smell is still present. So I'm not a big fan of that. But And the little brochure that they sent with the foundation um, for the combination oily skin, it just says enriched with vitamin E for antioxidant protection matte finish. And then for the dry skin version, it says that they've infused it with hyaluronic acid for 24 hour hydration and it has a natural finish. So I'm kind of having a feeling that my skin, my more mature skin <laughs> might actually enjoy the dry skin version a little better, but their big thing is that they have infused them both with skin carrying ingredients and they come in 44 diverse shades. So that's a new one because I don't recall them having more than maybe like 15 shades or maybe 20 before. So that's an improvement as well. Now that that's had a moment to kind of sink in up close, I do still, I, I do still see texture, but we will powder and see what happens with that. But coverage wise, I do feel like it's a good, strong, I would say medium to full coverage. I don't feel like it completely wiped away every spot. Let's just add a little more here on this little spot. Yeah, I would say, I would say just a notch below full coverage. I would say a medium full, <laughs> if there is such a thing. All right, I'm gonna add some concealer. I'm gonna use the Revlon 5-in-1. This is the kind of color correcting shade 001. Do this first. And then I'm going to go over it and add a little bit of 025. Before I set the face, I'm just going to give you kind of an up close. The cream products I put on over the top of it did work in really well. I don't think that they made the foundation look patchy or anything like that, but it does kind of look a little heavy right here in the pore area. For powder today, I was going to use the Revlon Blot Powder. I do love this, but it does add a little extra color, like a hint of color. And I'm so pale, I don't want to add any more color. So I'm going to go in with the Honest Beauty Blurring Powder and let's see how this looks. Um, it did help blur out a little bit. I'm still up close. I can see some texture here, but we will have to see how this wears through the day. All right, let me finish up the rest of my makeup and then I'll be back and we'll talk some more specifics. All right, I finished off with a lip combination of the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk 2 Medium and the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lipstick in the shade Saba. And I think this color just works perfectly with the eye look. So here is the finished eye look. I do feel like I would like a little inner corner highlight. So I'm going to go back with just a little bit of that flutter shade and just tap that right on the inner corner there. Okay, so let's discuss this finished look. So overall, I feel like all of the shadows performed very well. The colors that I used. Now I will pop up on the screen swatches of the entire palette now so that you can see them. I feel like for me, I was a little surprised at how bright 
and springy these greens are. I talked with my best friend about this palette and we were both kind of thinking that perhaps the greens in this palette were going to be more reminiscent of what we found in the mini retro. So this is the mini retro and this shade right here is the coolest murkiest green out there but I think it really kind of plays well with the colors that are in here and quite frankly I think would have been a great type of color to incorporate in here. Not that I don't love this color scheme but I feel like everything leans very kind of bright grassy green. So if you are a green eyeshadow lover you will love this palette. This definitely does not lean towards olive green though. And olive green shades are more my favorite, especially this time of year. So when I'm looking at this, I actually feel like it's more springy than I thought it was going to be. Having said that, I think this is a beautiful color combination. I do feel like this color scheme though is going to take a little getting used to if you try to break out of the all green look or the all pink look. While there are a lot of nice matte greens that will work well together and these matte pinks with the pink shimmer, I do wish that there was just one more matte deep shade in here. This shade right here would have been a good one in a matte finish because without this being matte, the only kind of darker intense color to deepen any look is really this green shade. If you're going to do just a pink look with this palette, it's going to be really light unless you bring in a touch of that green or if you don't mind having that little bit of kind of shimmer in the outer corner, which isn't my favorite. So. For me, I will get tons of use out of this palette. I don't have any other palettes that have this range of greens and I do love these pink shades and this flutter shade, really beautiful. So I will get a lot of use out of this, but I feel like I am going to be bringing in some other colors from other palettes to complete my looks. Not only the matte brow bone highlight shade, but for those other options for the deeper matte shades. Now, as far as quality, pigmentation, I feel like this it's all there in this palette. Now, the one thing that, because I do own quite a few of this midi size palette, these all can pop out. So I will probably be going into some of my other midi palettes and maybe exchanging a shadow or two so that it can be more of a complete palette for me when I choose to use this palette. Now, as far as the foundation goes, as I look up close, it looks like I have makeup on my face. So it's definitely not a skin-like finish. Now, if I had used a damp beauty sponge, I might have gotten a little lighter coverage. So I'm definitely going to continue playing with this. The coverage is good. You know, once I applied that powder, I feel like it did blur my texture on my skin more so than there was, but I do still see some texture on my skin. So it doesn't look exactly flawless, but I'm gonna continue to wear this throughout the day. The only other drawback to this foundation, that scent. The scent is still present. <laughs> so I'm hoping that does not cause my skin to break out, but I'm pretty scent sensitive. And so I'm not a big fan of products that have real strong scents and this one, has continued to be there even though you know I powdered and everything and there has been some time that's elapsed so that's just something to note I will definitely be testing out the other formulation as well I will keep you posted but overall this was a fun day of trying on new makeup I hope that you enjoy coming along for this as always check the description box below for links and a list of everything that I used today I'll include also the rest of the items that are on my face from the lip combination, cheek combination, and everything as well. So thank you as always so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.